Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, and it reads, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, the one that taught us the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere. I can keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. But God's with people here for a bit. Guess what, Israel? Guess what, you Israelite men, you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American it, Look, it's our duty to give our people, to feed them with the knowledge, with some understanding of the scripture, to let them know what's going on, what's happening, how the Lord is coming back, what this devil is up to. Look, feed them with the knowledge, with some understanding of the scripture. They didn't say nothing about giving them hot dogs, hamburgers, set up soup kitchens, and all that. No. They, look, Isaiah 33 and 6. Is, look, look, look. Man, that's needful right about now. The knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures shall be the stability of thy times. We need to be feeding our people with this word. Jeremiah 3, the Lord, plus the Lord said, feed my flock over and over and over and over, man. You see, and, look, and our labor is not in vain, but we must endure. We must continue until the end, right? Let's get this, get it again. This, what we're doing now is it, so important. It's one of the most important things of, of this thing of ours, of this truth. Pushing forth this word. How shall they hear without a preacher? Remember Romans, the 10th chapter? How shall they hear without a preacher? How's our people going to hear about Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, who they're going to call God and Jesus without someone being out there on the highways and byways? You people truly don't understand how important a watchman is. Jeremiah 3 and 15, and I will give you pastors. Spiritual leaders, right? According to mine heart, according to his mind, according to the Heavenly Father's mind, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding of the Scripture. And, look, and, and that's going to keep you stable. That, look, that's what's keeping us stable. See, seeing the men of the Lord out there in the highways and byways feeding, feeding us with this word, that's what's keeping us stable now. I don't know if you realize it or not, but let's get this though. I, something quick, I'm already at work, so I got to make it kind of quick. Isaiah 33 and 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that time. And remember, faith without works is dead. You say you got faith in the words of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, you say you're a true believer. You Israelite man out there, if the Spirit is on you to teach this word, go, look, look, go teach it. What are you waiting on? You, you see this economy crashing. You see this devil coming in with a digital system. You see this place circling the drain. CTD. What the hell are you waiting on? What, well, I mean, what, what, why, what are you waiting on? Why, why are you not warning the people? Why are you not feeding the Negroes, Latinos, and they don't make any with the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scripture? You, you got it, right? Isaiah 33 and 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. This is what's actually keeping us stable, this knowledge. Even though we see the doors closing in, we see the walls closing in, we see the Lord putting a squeeze on this place. What's keeping us stable? The knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scripture. It's real, man. This was truly keeping us stable. And look, I'm seeing all kind of people bug the hell out, not knowing what to do. But, but see, our foundation was built upon a rock. Lord, yeah, I was shy. Is your foundation built upon a rock or is it built upon sand? Which one, Israel? And strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord. Yahweh, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, is his tragic. Look, the Lord said, I ain't, look, let me, get, let me get that right quick. Like I said before, this is saying ain't nothing long. I had to come into work early. Bear with me. Psalm chapter 25, verse 14, and it reads, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So the secrets, the mysteries, the allegories, the parables, the deep, dark sayings of the Bible is with those that fear the Lord. So they're stable right about now right while the rest of the world is bugging their hell out. Don't, don't you see it, Israel? People offering themselves, people actually jumping out the window. People often often themselves and their and their relatives and their babies because they just can't handle the pressure. See, the Lord is starting to, to apply pressure. You see, the Lord is starting to apply pressure. 
And we know according to the Bible, two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed. So we're not messed up in the head. When we see all our people, we see a whole lot of our people being deleted. Look, we know this all being orchestrated by the God of Bible. Remember, we got the secrets. We know who's deleting. We know who's keeping a lot. Look, we know these things. Let's, let's just get it right quick. Remember, feed my people with the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures. We're supposed to be letting our people know who's doing the killing, who's keeping you alive, all, all the above, man. Who's making the world tick? Who's making the world go round? Let, let them know. Let them know, once again, that Sleazy is getting ready to make everything digital. Don't, don't you see it? Everything is going digital, and he's going to make it mandatory that you take that C-hip. Feed my people with the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures, so they'll be stable when it, when it approaches them. They know what decision to make. You got these Israelite groups talking about it's sin, it's an embargo, and sleeping with a white woman. So, so when Sleazy make it mandatory to take that seat hip, they're going to say, no, I don't think that's the M-A-R-K because my leader told me it was sleeping with a white woman. Or my leader told me it was an embargo. No, no. That seat hip is the M-A-R-K of the beast. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. I see now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See, the, the Christian pastor churches, that Christianity, um, plantation Christianity, they're not, they're, they ain't going to never bring out a scripture like this, man. And we got to be constantly, look, look, the scripture say, always be apt to teach. Always be ready to teach, right? Look, look, daily edification, right? Edify, matter of fact, we, we'll get that. Let's just get that right quick. When we bring out these lessons, this is, what we, this is what we do the lessons for. Let's get this. Let's get this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. And it reads, but he that prophesieth, remember we tell you what's going to happen before it even happen, right? Speaketh unto men to edification. We do these lessons to build. The word edify means to build. To build the Israelites up, the whole for elect. And exhortation. You know what I'm saying? It means to lift up, to exhort, to lift up, continue to push, and comfort. Remember, comfort my people with these words. Because even though we see this devil coming in like a flood, the Lord said, I'm going to lift up a standard. You see, it, everything is balanced, Israel. Everything is balanced. It ain't all bad, Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. We speak to the men and the women of our nation. We're edifying the men and the women. We're exhorting the men and the women. We're comforting the men and the women of our nation, right? The whole for elect of the nation of Israel. Remember, woe to him that preached not the gospel. Remember Israel? Still in the book of Corinthians. Let's go to the 15th chapter. Like I said before, this is just something quick. I'm already at work. I had to come in early. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's just get this right quick. Because look, all hell literally breaking loose right in front of our eyes. Right right in front of our eyes, right? Matter of fact, I started 57. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory. Ain't, ain't, ain't that the spirit? Look, look at that, man. Lord had me say, it ain't all bad, right? It's, all, it's balanced. There's hope for the hope for elect, even though Sleazy E is coming in like a flood, right? Verse 57, look at this. But thanks be to the Most High Yahweh, who the evilly called gods, he is, right? He exists, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. We won already. We got the victory already through Lord Yahweh Shai. That's what the scriptures are saying. Therefore, my beloved brethren, the house of David, the beloved, right? My beloved brethren, be steadfast. Unmovable. Because remember the scripture said, Who shall separate us from the love of Yahweh Shai? Shall tribulation, shall famine, shall perils. You see, shall the cares of this life separate you from the love of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai? Is that going to separate us from the love of the Lord? Because we're catching some hell. Hell, we're supposed to catch some hell. You see? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding. That's why your foundation got to be built upon that rock. 
Lord, Yahweh Shai, your foundation can our foundation cannot be built upon sand. Because that foundation is going to fall. And great is that fall, Israel. Our foundation has to be built upon a rock. Solid as a rock. Lord, Yahweh Shai, right? Always abounding, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Going from glory to glory, always growing, abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Us hitting the highways and byways, me doing these sit-down lessons, us doing these sit-down lessons. Charity is not in vain, but we got to endure to the end. We got to endure until the end. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was a heavy one right there. You see? Matter of fact, let's go, let's go to Isaiah. Like I said before, this is just some quick feed. My, matter of fact, yeah, let's get Isaiah right quick. Let's get Isaiah right quick. I'm at work, so it's going to be something quick. I'm going to feed you with what I can, then I'm going to wrap it up. Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62. And it reads, I have set watchmen upon thy walls. We are watchmen once again. Like the Lord had me say earlier in the beginning of this lesson, people truly don't understand how important a watchman is to a city. They don't truly understand because they understood they would be listening to the sound of the trumpet. But everybody is ignoring the sound of the trumpet that the watchman is blowing. And what's the sound of the trumpet? I was bringing out this word. Ain't nobody listening. Except for the hopeful elect. And that's all the Lord wants to listen. The Lord don't want the majority of our people to hear this word. He wants them to look at them fake ass TikTok videos, TikTok videos, and all, and all this other nonsense. I can't, I can't think of all them different websites. The Lord wants them to be over there. He don't want them to be over here. So if your video is only getting one or two views, hey, look, that's a hopeful elect viewing your video. Be thankful. We, we don't supposed to get millions of views. Now, Sneezy he is messing with the view count. You see, he most definitely is shadow banning our videos. But guess what? It's the Lord putting the spirit on him to shadow ban our videos. Because there's certain people that the Lord don't want to hear this word. And then there's certain people that the Lord want to hear this word just to, just to condemn, just to be condemned. What do you say? I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, a people before some place which shall never hold their peace. You hear that? So the true watchmen are going to always be heard. Always, every time you turn around, the true watchmen are the Lord. And Lord willing, we continue. Lord willing, all of us continue. Starting off with the head apostles slash elder bitches, the great millstone. Lord willing, we all continue to blow that trumpet, right? The Lord said, they ain't going to never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. You, you go to certain guys' pages, they ain't, they ain't did a video in months, in years. But, but oh yeah, they the watchmen of the Lord. The Lord said his true men, his true watchmen are going to never hold their peace. You go, They're going to always blow on that trumpet, always giving you the warning. Always bringing out current events, letting you know how T.I. is, giving you the scoop, giving you the word on the street. You see? It's just, and give him no rest to your staff. We ain't going to give the Heavenly Father and the Son no rest. Lord's will. Till he established, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And that's not happening right about now. Jerusalem is not a praise in the earth right about now. And, and the Lord already told us where to go and preach this word, where to go and blow that trumpet. Let's just get that right quick. St. Matthew 22, because remember, we're fishing right about now, Israel. See, the, the, you, you people come on our comment board with your stupid ass words. You, you 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 have no clue of what's going on right about now. The man that you see out there on the highways and byways, we're fishing with the word. But but if you read Jeremiah 16 and 16, it says that when the fishing is done, then they become hunters. So all you scoffers, all you mockers, you see, all you thoughts, all you non-believers that come on our comment boards, the Lord is marking you. You you don't know that. You you too blind to see that though. You too blind to understand that. You're being marked for judgment. Repent and shut your mouth and listen. You got two ears and one mouth. Why Why do you think the Lord did that? Let's get this, St. Matthew 22 and 9. Go ye therefore into the highways 
And as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So the men of the Lord are going to be well on the highways and byways, reading the Bible week in and week out, regardless of people here or forbear. It, it, it is what it is. And look, look, we're going to cry aloud. We're going to spare not. We're going to lift up our voice like trumpets and show our people where the hell they going off at. That's our job. Just like when you go to, to a restaurant and you see the cook back there or you see the manager or you see, you see the cash register, you can't go and tell them how to do their job, but you got people trying to come and tell us how to do our job. No, we have already been given instructions on, on how to do our job. We don't need you to tell us how to do our job. You go do your job. How you was instructed. First Peter chapter 5, verse 2, and it reads, Feed the flock. Let's just blow it up. Look, look, feed the flock. Well, look, feed them with what? We read it in Jeremiah 3 and 15. Feed the flock. Because look, missiles are going to hit this place. World War III is going to pop off. And them troops are coming over here. Concentration camps. Famine, race wars, class wars, civil wars. You see, a digital device is going to be inserted in you soon come. You see? Don't take it, Israel. Don't take to see him. Don't take to see him. Don't take to see him. First Peter chapter five, verse two, feed the flock of the most high, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Nobody shouldn't have to keep kicking you in your ass to do a video. Nobody shouldn't have to keep kicking you, you in your ass to have you go out into the highways and byways and feed them with the knowledge, understanding of the scriptures that you have been blessed with, that you have been blessed with. The Lord bless you with the knowledge, but you don't want to do nothing. The Lord said, we got to do this thing willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Always be apt to teach Israel. Remember, our labor is not in vain. And I'm just hitting some quick, I'm just hitting some points, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Our labor is not in vain. I got one more after this, and I'm gone, Israel. I got one more after this, and I'm gone, Lord's will. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. For the Most High, Yahweh, through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. You think the Lord, the Lord didn't forget nothing that we have done. Since the first day that we put our hand to the plow to this very second, and Lord willing, we endure it to the end. Because he that shall endure it to the end, the same shall be saved. We, we're trying to, Lord willing, be counted worthy to escape all this death and destruction that's coming, man. Remember, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. Destruction unto me if I preach not the gospel. What, what, what part of that are you not getting? For the most high is not unrighteous to get your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, and were coming in the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and that ye have ministered to the saints, which serving our people. The Lord has set up to be servants. We're serving our people with this hot, fresh meal, which is this word. And do minister. But once once again, we must continue. And look, look, and we desire, we desire, man, that every one of you do show the same diligence. To the full assurance of hope and to the end. That's why that's why the scriptures say when you when you come to um do pretty much um working for the Lord, we gotta put forth all our strength. You see, we can't be half assing it, right? Even though we we in these beat down bodies and we do get tired, but daily edification. Like like the, the true prophets of the Lord, when we miss a day of doing a lesson, man, we, we feel bad. Something might happen. You see, we might have to end up, you you working so hard. By the time you get up, you just fall asleep. Next thing you know, you wake up. It's the next day. We feel bad when we can't get a lesson in. We feel bad when, we, when we're working and we can't make it to the highways and byways. The Lord sees all that. We desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Because we're prisoners of hope. You see? And that ye be not slothful, but followers. We can't be lazy, even though we're in these beat down bodies. The Lord, the scripture said we got to be fervent. We got to be on fire. Because remember, the Lord said, I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. That thou, thou wish that you was either cold or hot. But since thou art lukewarm, the Lord going to spew you out. You see, going to lukewarm, it's like um, you really ain't into it. You see, you're not excited. 
know what I'm saying? You, this is laxy days. You, you really don't care. You see, the Lord said, be on fire or be cold. Be hot or be cold, right? That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith, right? Right? Faith. Believing in something that you don't see. And patience inherit the promises. Because look, the Lord has given us the gift of faith to believe that even though we're seeing all hell break loose, we're seeing the walls close in. Look, we haven't been given the gift of faith to know that the Lord is going to deliver us. He's going to come through. In the nick of time, the Lord said, I'm going to come through. Remember, he ain't never forsook anyone that called upon him or that believed in him. Remember, Israel? And I got one more scripture and I'm gone. I got to go. And Lord willing, the elect of the nation of Israel is edified. Feeding, feeding Israel, yo, is the most important thing a watchman can do. That's the most important thing. 21. Say John 21. And I'm gone, Israel. Say John 21. Let's see. Bear with me. Yeah, 15. St. John 21, 15. So when they had died, Yahweh shall say to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. And when we read Jeremiah 3 and 15, right? Right? We read First Peter 5 and 2. We, we read that, right? We read Isaiah 33 and 6, right? Verse 16, St. John 21 and 16. And he said unto, to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my sheep. So you Israelite men <clears throat> that went to the highways and byways and you got pages, and Israelite men and women go to your page to get fed, but, but you ain't did nothing in weeks. You ain't did nothing in months. You ain't did nothing in years. Do, do you not know how much trouble you in with the Lord? You, you Them demons on you. So you look, you, me, and all of us have been given talents. Look, look, you better do something. Look, you better do something. He said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Remember, be ye not slothful. And we desire that at every one of you do show the same diligence. Remember that? Remember what we just read in Hebrews, the sixth chapter? Verse 17, he said unto him, Lord, you have I said unto the apostle Peter the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time. Remember, the third time is a charm, right? Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh Shai, who they even call Jesus, said unto him, feed my sheep, man. And I do got one more. I do got one more. Let's get one. Let's get this last one. First Timothy. Let's get this last one through the spirit of your house. But you know, and once again, Lord willing, the elect is edified. Remember, we, we was all given talents. You Israelite men out there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just go straight to the point. Press the time, First Timothy chapter four, verse sixteen, and it reads: Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. We got to constantly be examining ourselves each and every day. Look, look the Apostle Ram live. He going live right about now. He he feeding the sheep, man. He feeding the flock. What are you Israelite men doing out there that has the knowledge with understanding scripture? Are you feeding the flock? And the phone just chimed in. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. We got to be teaching the right doctrine too. We got to be teaching the 100% truth according to the doctrine. Can't be no leaven in the doctrine, man. Because a little leaven, leaven if the whole lump, right? Continuing them, continuing what you was taught. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself 
and them, they hear thee. See how important it is to be a watchman? See how important it is to go out there and teach this word? For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself by teaching this word and enduring it to the end. And them, they hear thee. The Israelites, they hear you. They're going to be saved too. How shall they hear without a preacher? Shalom.